Hey guys, welcome to the garden. It's on my gardener. So today I'm going to be talking about strawberries and specifically fall strawberries. These are an everbearing variety right here. I got a uh, about three quarters of a bed full of strawberries and they're starting to spread and they're starting to look really nice. Um, but one thing that I've found is that they can be really invasive and that's why I always keep them in a raised bed like this because if you have them on the ground they're gonna spread everywhere and they still will spread if you don't keep an eye on them but at least this way they'll drape over the edge and then that way you can catch them snip off all the things that are draping because trust me they can get out of control pretty quick as I discovered up by the house I had a I had a little bucket of some alpine strawberries and those things oh my word once they touch the ground they're off and it's off to the races and they will spread everywhere so great thing but you just got to keep an eye on them especially if you want to uh, keep your beds looking really nice and um, you know in control uh, <laughs> which I've had a pretty I've had a uh, pretty easy time with these because these are just started I started them uh, this spring but they've all started to shoot out a lot of runners some are even fruiting which typically I don't let them do for the first year to let them really put a lot of energy into the roots but some of them just decided they wanted to while I was away for a couple weeks and, um, and they're just kind of doing their own thing. So they're not doing half bad. It's really late in the fall and they're already producing still. So, um, you know, they're ever bearing. So assuming that we don't get a frost, I might actually get some strawberries in a time when I'm not sure who gets strawberries right now. I do have a variety called Ozark that I'm actually breeding out um, in some buckets and I'm letting them get a really nice established start. And then I'm actually gonna make another bed for those varieties. And then I have another one um, for what it's called. I think it's a yellow strawberry. It's really cool. Um, and I got actually the cuttings from a friend. So he uh, he gave me one of the little cuttings or one of the rhizomes, I guess, from from the strawberries. So I have two different varieties that I'm actually growing out. So they're really cool. There's a lot of different varieties. Um, like I said, I got alpines up by the house. So it's pretty fun in the springtime when you get all these different varieties going. Um, but one thing that I was going to talk to you guys about is fall time. And when you, when you guys, if you guys are in the northern hemisphere, uh, like we are, and it gets sometimes below zero, you don't want strawberries to be, uh, you know, you, they don't want to be frozen to death, especially in a raised bed. They don't have a whole lot of insulation. They have just the soil that's around them, and that sometimes isn't enough either, especially it gets down to negative numbers, which it has gotten down negative numbers. Um, you want to give them some protection. So one way that I'll do that is, see they're still green right now. The, I mean, you can't really see them, but um, if you guys can see, uh, you know, over here, they're, they're still green. And so I'm not gonna cover them yet. But if you guys are uh, obviously like in Colorado or something where you guys are already getting snow, it's probably a good idea to start doing this. What you wanna do is you wanna mulch with some leaves um, or some grass clippings, um, just a very light mulching because you don't want them to you don't want the really cold weather to be exposed right to the rhizome otherwise it won't come back next year i've had a lot of problems with that over the past with my alpine strawberries i'd have about half of them gone because they're in a bucket and so if i didn't insulate them well enough uh, they would never come back so um, it's really key to make sure you insulate them well whether it be with hay uh, leaves or whatever that's really great another way that you can insulate them is once you put the leaves on it a lot of people say oh well it all blows off just take a garbage bag or something over your beds and um, and just staple it to the beds because you don't want uh, the leaves blowing around obviously because then you lose your insulation. Um, so that's just that really quick thing. And then the other thing that I wanted to talk about was with the runners. The runners are the the babies of, of the, uh, the strawberries. I'm not bringing you guys in close, you guys can check this out. But there's a couple things that you wanna do to ensure that you have a really healthy plant next year and um, and also a really good harvest next year as well because right about this time you're going to notice that uh, your strawberries start sending out all these runners and they do that because they want to reproduce obviously they don't reproduce all the time via fruit they reproduce via runners and runners are one of the best ways to get uh, your your plants to reproduce because you can make an entire bed out of basically five plants which is awesome I don't know any other way you can do that and it only takes about two years to do so it's awesome in that sense but um, but it really inhibits a good harvest as well because when they're setting out all those runners that's all energy leaving the plant and you want the plant to be healthy next year so it can produce a lot of flowers and fruit and it can't do that if it's producing if it's 
sending all of its energy in the late fall into producing runners for next year. You're gonna have a lot of plants, but a very poor harvest. So what you wanna do is, uh, I'm gonna bring you guys in close, but basically what you wanna do is you wanna cut those runners now. If they've already rooted, which a lot of them probably already have, you wanna cut them because those, the new rooted runners the new rooted little baby plants, they can survive on their own. They're officially a sustaining, uh, they're self-sustaining. They're on their own once they have roots. So you can cut those, you can cut the umbilical cord of the mother plant to the runner, and then that way it can, the mother plant can actually start focusing more energy into building a good root system, a healthy rhizome, and putting out a lot of energy uh, into the roots so that in the springtime it can just explode, put out a lot of berries, and provide you with a lot of fruit. So come in close, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so you see here all these, all these beautiful strawberry plants, they're still green. So that's why I said I'm not gonna mulch them yet. They're still growing and in fact, you actually have a few with some, uh, some strawberries right there. Yeah, I hope you guys can see that. Uh, there you go, there, right yeah, there. See, strawberry, cool. All right, well, what I was talking about is you see these runners here. This is a uh, main plant right here. It's just a little bit off screen, but you have this main runner and you get a, uh, you get one of these little umbilical cords and at the end of it has um, a plant on it. And that plant has some, some beautiful roots here. It's, it's a fully ready sustaining plant. So what you wanna do is you wanna just take that, snip it right off. Uh, if it has the roots, if it doesn't, wait a little bit for it to get roots and then find a spot where there isn't any, uh, any plants and plop it in the ground and it's gonna grow just fine. It's not, it's not gonna die, don't worry. Then you got another plant here with another uh, with another strawberry. Obviously, you get the uh, the the umbilical cord coming back to the mother plant, which is this one, coming all the way to this. And this has some roots on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna snip it. Now, normally you don't want to rip the plant out. Obviously, if it's already rooted, these just so happen to be growing right on the surface. All right. Well, see, here's another mother plant, and as you guys can see. There's a umbilical cord right here, and the plant is actually rooted along the wall, but it's actually rooted. So what we're just gonna do is either take scissors or just take our fingers and just snip that off. Leave this in the ground because it's already rooted really well, and, um, and that way it's gonna grow, and you have the umbilical cord cut so that this plant right here, this beautiful plant, can continue putting out uh, you know, energy into putting out fruit, flowers, and better roots. Now also what I'll typically do is in the fall, I'm going to probably take off these berries. Now, a lot of people would say, "Oh, we'll leave that on." I want, you know, I want some, I want some berries in the fall. But it's really, actually, almost detrimental to the plant because when you're getting nights like this, this is not anywhere near a ripe berry. This is going to be another 20, 30 days, and so the plant is going to be putting in a lot of energy into producing not only one fruit, but two fruits, three fruits, four fruits, um, and so you got four four berries right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna actually take my my fingers and just snap that right off. Because although it'd be great in theory to have some berries, those were never gonna be ripening in the amount of time that we have left in the season. So those have to go because now what it can do is it actually can focus into producing either more leaves or better roots um, or sending sugars down into the rhizome so that it can produce energy next year because you don't want it obviously producing something that it's not going to get a yield out of. Um, if you know, if it's going to, if it's going to ripen within a couple days, I would have left it because um, then I could get a snack, harvest it, and it could then put energy in. But those were nowhere near ripening, so now you're going to have a really healthy plant next year. So keep that in mind as well: is fruit and runners have to go in the fall so that the mother plants can also grow because your mother plants are going to be the healthiest ones. They're going to be the ones that are going to produce the most and they're also going to produce next runners runners next year. So it's uh, it's a never ending process because then the runners are going to produce more runners and those runners are going to become mother plants and produce more runners. And so, like I said, you're just going to have a endless cycle of strawberry plants and they're a great snack. They're a, um, a fun one to grow and they're super easy to grow. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and this talk about strawberries in the fall. I hope you guys also try growing some strawberries. Like I said, this is the ever-bearing variety, but um, you know, go do some research for yourself, find out which ones you like growing the best, and um, there's a variety out there for everybody. So whether you like it based on color, by size, by flavor, by yield time, there's a little something out there for everybody. So you should have no problem finding a great variety for yourself. 
and this applies this all this talk pretty much applies to any strawberry variety um, so like I said doesn't matter get yourself some strawberries try them they're a lot of fun and they're really great to grow and they're they're fairly easy to grow as well so hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode and this is at my garden I'll talk to you guys later see ya bye